everyone, we are going to get started in just a minute. And I have seven o'clock, so I will get started. Thank you all for joining me tonight for the powerlifting preseason webinar. My name is Kendall Zeslitz. I am a sports director for Special Fix Maryland, as well as the powerlifting staff lead. We are recording this webinar tonight, so I'll be sending out the link in the slides tomorrow morning if you need to reference it or if you have a coach who is unable to attend, I'll give it all to them. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the webinar, you can do it one of two ways. You can raise your hand by clicking the hand icon, or you can actually type a question into the box. I have Steve Bennett who will be moderating for me. So hopefully he answers your questions properly. If not, I will do so. All right, so tonight we are going to talk about the following things. I'm gonna go over the sports management team, the deadlines for this powerlifting season, how to qualify for the state championships, upcoming events, including competitions, the state championship, and the coaches training that we have scheduled. And then we'll do a quick rules update and reminders, and we'll have time for a question and answer session at the end. I did include all of the slides that have our general forms and paperwork. I'm not going to go over them um, because I'm sure you've all seen them many, many times, but I did include that so when I send it out, you can reference them. All right, so the powerlifting sports management team, um, it's pretty much the same as last year. We have three coaches, Jim Downs, Kathy Bear, and Dan Zodarelli, all representing different areas. And then our athlete on the sports management team is Kenny Long. He's an athlete from Howard County. And he actually recently just went out to Seattle for USA Games to represent Team Maryland, along with Kathy Barrett and a Howard County athlete, Katherine Graff. So deadlines. I know this is everyone's favorite part of Special Olympics. Um, we have the training registration deadline on September 10th. This is when everyone for your county, athletes, unified partners, coaches, and volunteers have to be in GMS if they are going to be participating at the state competition. Um, the last date to submit missing forms is September 20th. All athletes have to have a valid medical, a medical that is valid through the date of the state competition, which is October 20th this year. And all coaches, partners, and volunteers have to have their proper paperwork and trainings valid through that date as well. The competition registration deadline is going to be October 4th. And this is where you need to have all of your rosters submitted. So everyone needs to be in what event they're going to be participating at in Fall Sports Festival. One thing I do want to touch on with the forms. Um, so we transitioned a few years ago to a new medical form and a new volunteer background form. We will no longer be accepting the old version of these forms. So if we receive them, we will have to turn it away and let you know that we need the current medical for that athlete. Um, if you have an athlete or a volunteer who has an old form turned in that was already accepted, that is still going to be valid until their expiration date. We won't make them get another one right away. Um, we'll honor the date that they submitted it. But just moving forward, we will no longer accept any of the old forms. So qualifying for the state tournament, the first thing is that the athlete has to meet all the training and registration requirements and coaches have to have all necessary certification requirements. So we really are trying to enforce having all coaches have their sports specific training in addition to their concussion training, protective behaviors, and their volunteer form. Um, I will be sending out a spreadsheet tomorrow that shows what coaches need to get the sports specific training along with the survey link to sign up for that training, um, but I'll touch on that in a few slides. And the other thing that you have to do to qualify for the state tournament is to compete at a minimum of one sanctioned competition. This can either be a multi-area competition or an in-house competition. This is the minimum. If there are more competitive opportunities available, we always encourage our athletes to get out there and to practice for um, the actual state championships. So what is the point of a sanctioned competition? It's just like I said, it helps them prepare for the state championships and gives them more experience and helps them really get better at their sport. 
Um, in order for it to count as a sanctioned competition, it must emulate state level competition from a sports competition perspective. It doesn't need to have all the flair of the decorations and all the technology, that kind of stuff, but it does need to follow our Special Olympics rules as well as the national governing bodies rules. Um, you need to have knowledgeable and qualified officials and judges. This is important in all of our sports, but especially within powerlifting, um, we really need to have officials who know how to judge a lift because if we're having athletes think that their lifts are successful and they get to the state championships and we kind of crack down on it, it won't be a great situation for anyone. Another thing is to make sure that you have proper people um, acting as spotters. Powerlifting can be a dangerous sport if someone's not paying attention and the bar drops. So we just want to make sure that we're staying on top of this to keep our athletes as safe and happy as they can be. We do require all of our um, competitions to have medical personnel on site. And ideally, it would be a multi-county competition. However, with the nature of powerlifting, having an in-house competition is totally okay. Um, if you are going to be having a competition, please have your area director submit a sanction form to me at least 30 days prior to the event. So as of right now, this is all that I have received for sanctioned competitions. Howard County will be hosting one open to all the counties on September 23rd, and they will also be having an in-house one on October 9th. If your county is not up here and you are planning on hosting, please just submit a sanction form to me. It's a pretty quick form, and then I can send it out to the proper people if it's a multi-county competition. I also included the date and the link for the pre-competition webinar. It's going to be on Wednesday, October 10th this year from 7 to 8. Our coaches training. So we will be having that on Saturday, September 8th from 1130 in the morning to approximately 130 in the afternoon. We're using the same venue that we did last year, Go Performance in Clarksburg, Maryland. They were fantastic to work with and they have a great facility and they're really excited to have us back. So please encourage all of your coaches who need training and maybe some who they don't need to renew their training yet, but they just kind of want to brush up their skills, send them out. It should be a great morning. And again, I will be sending out this link to everybody tomorrow. Um, we just got the time finalized, so that's why you're just hearing about it now. So Fall Sports Festival is our culminating state event for powerlifting. It's going to be on Saturday, October 20th this year, and we're still at Mount St. Mary's University up in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Um, the time frame is approximately 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We'll have more details for the state competition as we get closer to the event. Um, one thing that I am asking is that if you know anyone who is a USAPL certified powerlifting official, if you could see if they are interested in coming out or just pass along their contact information to me and I would be more than willing to reach out to them. Getting USAPL certified officials is something we've always struggled with in the past, so we're really trying to be proactive with it and getting as many as we can to run a successful competition. So important information, it's so important that it's all capitalized and bolded to um, no athlete or volunteer may participate in any manner in a Special Olympics Maryland program without a valid and current medical form or volunteer application. We really are cracking down on this. Um, there are going to be no exceptions to this policy, so please make sure that your local program is following these rules. The next few slides just kind of go over the coach's code of conduct, which is something that we are trying to make sure all coaches really know before they come to any event or even show up to practice. I'm not going to read through every bullet point just because it's a lot of reading and I don't want to bore you guys, but I will just go over the headers and please read this on your own time. So the first section is having respect for others, ensuring a positive experience, acting professionally and taking responsibility for action, quality service to the athletes and unified partners, and lastly, the health and safety of the athletes and unified partners. This is one that really pertains to powerlifting because if it is an unsafe lifting environment, that is where injuries happen. And we always wanna make sure that we are providing these safe, clean environments for our athletes to have a great time practicing their sport. So at the state competition this year, we will be offering the same events as last year, the deadlift, the bench press, and the combination. For the combination, an athlete is required to compete in the bench press and deadlift to qualify for final score in the combination event. 
we calculate their total score by adding together the maximum weight he or she successfully lifted in the bench press and the deadlift. If there are three unsuccessful attempts in any of the lifts, they will automatically be eliminated um, from the combination event. So if you have an athlete who's in the combination event and they lift three beautiful lifts for the bench press and they get to the deadlift and they're unable to, um, they don't get any successful lifts there, then they would be eliminated from the combination event. So we don't have any rules updates really from last year. I just wanted to include the information about the 15 pound bar and the 15 kilogram bar again, because I know we do have two areas that this is relevant to. Um, so we are allowing the use of the 15 pound bar for both events at our state competition this year. However, the National Powerlifting Committee has only approved the use of the 15 kilogram bar. So any athlete who is using the 15 pound bar at our state competition would not be able to um, progress to the next level, say in national games or uh, world games. One thing that we are looking at doing for the 2019 season is offering a training in the squat event. Um, it's something that we've been looking for to add to our competition at Fall Sports Festival, but we know that you cannot properly train athletes if you haven't been properly trained yourself. Um, so just keep this on your radar. We don't have anything set in stone yet, but we will distribute more information once we have some more details. So rule of reminders, all athletes have to be at least 16 years of age to participate in the powerlifting sport. Um, chalk is permitted on hands and powder is only permitted on certain areas of the body. Only the athlete and one coach are permitted on the lifting stage along with the officials and the spotters. So what we did last year at Fall Sports Festival was we had escorts who were volunteers there to bring your athlete up on the stage. However, we recognize that also with you guys being up there, things became a little bit crowded. So we are eliminating that as a role. We will no longer have the volunteers bringing your athlete up on stage unless you have a special request and an athlete wants to be brought up by someone else. We can definitely manage that. Um, so just be aware of that. We will be asking the coaches to bring the athletes up. Lifters have one minute to initiate a lift. We can add additional time of up to a total of three minutes for athletes with physical disabilities. This needs to be requested via GMS in advance of competition. Also on the form I'm gonna send out about two and a half weeks before the actual state competition that gets all the lifter information, name, county, what weight they're at now, what you think their opening list might be. Um, I'm also gonna include an accommodation column. So if you could just type it in there, that way we can make sure we have it on the listing card and the officials on their platforms know to accept um, that accommodation. We wanna make sure that it's something that's been approved and then the officials aren't saying, no, you can't do that when really you have been allowed to do that. So that's something we just wanna stay on top of this year. So please be aware of adding that into GMS, let your GMS coordinator know that so they can put it in. Um, and if weights are dropped intentionally, it's declared a no lift and the lifter may be disqualified. Uniform requirements, so it's a lifting suit, an undershirt is required, briefs, foot gear with the knee high socks, a lifting belt and wraps are both optional. Substances that we allow are baby powder, pool hall chalk, liquid chalk, resin, talc, and magnesium carbonate. We do not allow any lubricants such as oil or grease. So I know this was pretty quick for you guys. Um, if anyone has any questions, this is the time to raise your hand or type the question in and Steve can either read them out loud to me or I can open up the tab and see if we have anything. Yeah, right Right now, Kendall, um, Jim Downs is asking the question, I think both for the submission of lifts as well as the body weight of the individuals, whether it's gonna be in pounds or kilograms, and just to make sure that um, we really push that information out to all the coaches and double check and all that good stuff. Yes, thank you, Jim. So we are sticking with kilograms, so body weight, starting list, everything that you submit to us needs to be in kilograms um, this year. I know last year we ran into a few snafus where things were in pounds, so we had to do the conversions, and this will just help keep things a little bit quicker. Um, I will be communicating this throughout the season too, so I promise I won't let you forget that it's kilograms. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely be sticking with that because it is the rule through Special Olympics International. 
Does anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns? Those are the only ones I'm seeing at this time, Kendall. Okay, well, that's always good. Um, so I did put up the information for if you have any questions about power lifting, obviously, please reach out to me. You have my email. I will send out my cell phone number. Contact me whenever. Uh, but if you have questions about any of the other fall sports that we offer, I've listed everyone's name and their email address. Who's in charge of that so they can be of assistance with you. And then the last 20 slides or so are just the generic um, forms and what coaches need and all that stuff. So I will send that out so you can read through it at your own pleasure. But that is all I have for you guys today. I promised Steve I would make it quick. Um, but yeah, I'm looking <laughs> forward to a great powerlifting season. So just feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or anything. But thank you all for joining. Have a great night.